Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HBR Minute HCI podcast episode, I explore the recent HBR video, Developing the CEO Within You. Welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to be with you again today for this HBR Minute HCI podcast episode. Today, I'll be exploring the HBR video, Developing the CEO Within You. An interview with Joseph L. Bauer, professor at Harvard Business School. This video talks about becoming an effective CEO, work for companies committed to leadership development, and taking responsibility for your own development on the job. Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you on the flip side of this first clip. Okay, our mission for today is to help aspiring leaders prepare themselves to be strong CEO candidates in the future. But before we dive into the specifics, can you explain to us what an inside outsider is? Sure, Uh, an inside outsider is a manager that has grown up inside the company, developed there, but somehow or other hasn't drunk the Kool-Aid, has retained objectivity, has a a perspective on what's happening in the world and can understand the need for change in the company. Okay, thanks. I really like how we start out this video in talking about an insider-outsider. This is really, really important for organizations because we need institutional knowledge. We need people who know the internal politics, who know the players, the stakeholders, and have relationships with key people throughout the organization. But at the same time, we need people who can bring in outside perspectives, who haven't drunk the Kool-Aid, who can still see the problems and are willing to speak up and speak out about those problems. And so that's what he calls the insider-outsider. And frankly, more organizations need to be able to utilize these individuals. It's difficult, though, because a lot of times these insider-outsiders, they get pushed further and further to the edge or even to the outside, forced to leave the, the organization or they choose to leave the organization because of the discomfort they feel, because they aren't drinking the Kool-Aid, because they are pushing back, they are challenging. But there is such thing as loyal dissent. And if I am fully committed to an organization and I see something problematic, either you know from a leader or in the processes, the systems, uh, the policies, the procedures, I, I need to be able to speak up about those things and I need to share my input. And organizations need that input. They need to leverage people with that kind of a background, that kind of a capacity. I've personally seen myself this way in many organizations in the past as an insider outsider. And it's a hard road to walk uh, because you're really kind of on on the bleeding edge of trying to push the organization in the right direction while never fully being seen as uh, as inside as the true quote unquote insiders. Again, if if our organizations are to be healthy, then we need to embrace and even give more opportunities to these insider outsiders so that we can get the benefit of both their insider understanding and views, but still also the the benefit of their willingness to challenge the status quo. You note in your Harvard Business Review article adaptation of your book how important it is for aspiring leaders to take responsibility for their own development from the very start of their careers. So to help guide that process, you've developed a series of questions for individuals to ask themselves to make sure they're on the road to the corner office. So let's begin with those questions you suggest leaders ask during the recruitment process. For instance, an obvious starting question, why are you being hired? Right. Uh, You want to ask 
you want to get a good understanding of, of why this company's hiring you. Is it, are they, is obviously, they want you to do some work in the short term. But do they see you? Is this a company that hires people to develop and grow over time? Is there a career path? Are there career paths? Or are you basically cannon fodder to do the job this year and we'll see what happens? So how do you get at the answer to that question? Should you overtly ask the employer? Should you be asking other people? Well, there are a lot more questions you can ask. How are they going to help you grow? Uh, what pattern of assignments are you going to get? That's really important. Uh, are you going to have time to learn? Is this a place where you're just running all the time and do, 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 never? Uh, what kind of mentoring are they going to provide you? Are there people who are actually going to help you? There are companies that will talk to this. Others, this will be the first time they've heard of it. That's revealing. Uh, what kind of training do they provide? When you're getting out of school, the last thing you want to think about is going back to school. But the truth of the matter is continuing education is a great thing. Does the company support it? Really important, if your goal is to you want to run, how early can you run a business? Is this a company that's organized so that there are lots of pieces of business that are small and you can get a chance to try your wings? Or is this a place where you're going to be doing analysis all your life, you're going to be in a function all your life? The first is what you're looking for. It's a place with lots of businesses to run. So Joe, how specific an answer can you reasonably expect to that question? Some companies would give, would, would, would ask, I mean, they'd organize their pitch to you around the kind of questions I just asked. So some companies have really thought about it. Great. The truth is, we need to take ownership over our own professional development. He proposes a series of questions, and so in the upcoming clips, uh, th those categories of questions are going to be explored a little bit uh, as a teaser to the book and to other lectures and videos you can find as he speaks on this topic. Uh, the first, though, is in the recruitment process as you're going into the organization. The types of questions you should be asking as you're trying to determine whether it's a good fit for you. Of course, the organization's going to try to figure out if you're a good fit for them, uh, but just because they, they want you doesn't mean you want them. So let's explore that here in just a moment. But first, I want to say that even though he's framing this as being your own CEO and preparing yourself for the corner office, that doesn't need to be your end ambition. Whether or not you want to be a CEO someday, we're all leaders and we all are going to have increasingly responsible roles within organizations uh, where we find ourselves. Uh, so whether we're a middle manager, whether we're a, a senior executive, a CEO, uh, a, an entrepreneur trying to pave our own path, whatever the case may be, we are going to influence others, we are going to lead others, and these principles that he's exploring apply just as well um, to anyone trying to progress in their career and find and, and lean into those new leadership opportunities. So with that said as a precursor, I do think this applies to anyone listening, anyone considering about how you might develop yourselves in your own careers or how you might help, help your people to do the same. So let's think about the recruitment process. How are we going to make sure that this is going to be a good place for us? Now, of course, we want to be paid fairly. We want a good benefits package. Uh, we can do some research and try to find out about the culture a little bit and those sorts of things. That's all important. But what he's suggesting is that from the get-go, we should try to figure out what the organization is going to do for us, how they're going to invest in us, and what kinds of opportunities they're going to give us to grow and develop while we're in our current role that we're being hired for, so that perhaps we can grow into the next role, the next level up. That's not something that every hiring manager is even thinking about. They, they should be, but they're not. And because they're not, we need to press that point a little bit and try to really understand what kind of coaching and mentoring culture there is and how we're going to be uh, supported uh, through challenging stretch assignments and, and other opportunities so that we can learn and grow. If I'm going to commit so much of my time and energy to this organization, I want to not only do a good job, of course, and, and provide value to the company, but I want to develop myself, my skills, my knowledge, my capabilities, my competencies, and prepare myself for the next step up. 
uh, whenever that is. That may be in six months, a year, five years, um, but I want to be prepared for the next opportunity. And so we need to be asking those questions to make sure the company uh, is willing to invest in us. So the next phase, now that you're on the job, you've developed another series of questions to help shepherd your development further. Um, the first sounds like an obvious one to me. Do you meet your numbers? Well, yeah. I mean, in the end of the day, it's great to talk about growth and development, but you've got to perform. Uh, you can't get into the game without developing a reputation for meeting your commitments. So that's, that, that's very important. Uh, but there are other kinds of things. Uh, if you're a person who is early recognized as someone who helps others, do you develop other people? Uh, are, are, is working with you a step up for them? Well, that is a huge thing in your own reputation as a, as a developer. How do you get on with your peers? Are you so competitive that they don't trust you? Or are, they, are, are you someone that they really welcome? That's, uh, uh, that's a big deal. Uh, how do you manage up? I mean, one of the most interesting things is we, we think of our bosses as people who are going to help us. So that usually means when your boss sees you coming, they say, uh-oh, here's a problem. They're going to ask for something. Well, think about what a difference it makes if you can actually help your boss. So managing up is a big issue, and, and how you're going to help the organization, it, that also means you're learning about what it means to manage at higher levels of the organization. Uh, finally, I would say, are you transparent? Or are you as someone who, who gets a reputation for spinning what they do? So basically, if you're going to be a leader, you probably want to get a reputation for being pretty straight. Now, does that mean being brutally honest? Can't you still tell a good story to talk up what you're doing, what your team is doing? Yes, but I think what managers really respect is someone who's willing to get right to the point. And if there's a problem saying, look, I screwed up, or this didn't work out, here's what we're going to do about it, not you know, some tap dance. Okay. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Clearly, we need to perform. We need to get things done. And so that's about hitting our own metrics, our own KPIs, setting clear goals and objectives and working towards those and making sure that those around us, uh, particularly those re we report to, understand what we are accomplishing, so that we can communicate that clearly, effectively, transparently so that they can see what we're accomplishing. That's super important. But what he's also talking about here, which is equally important, is the reputation that we're building within the organization as a collaborator, as someone who invests and supports, uh, invests in and supports others, and as one who's willing to not just meet our own personal KPIs, but to to help the team as a whole, to help other individuals to grow and develop. Uh, ultimately, that we are solution drivers, not problem creators, and 
you'll start to develop that reputation one way or the other um, the longer you're in an organization. People know who's good to work with, who's not, who, who we should be avoiding, and who we should seek out on any project. Uh, now, if, if the more valuable you are, the more you're going to be sought out, and you do have to maintain boundaries, and you do have to learn to say no. You can't do everything, and you can't be everything for everyone all the time. But if we can focus on that kind of uh, mentality of service towards others in the work that we do, that will not only bring excellence to ourselves, but it will bring excellence to, to those around us. And we'll be seen as an invaluable part of the team and the organization. And those are the types of people that organizations should at least want to promote into next level leadership positions. Now, I, I fully acknowledge that that's not always the case and there's nepotism and there's there's um, favor, favoritism shown towards certain people and, and some leaders have biases that negatively impact uh, members of their team. That's the political reality within any organization, but all else being equal, you're definitely in a better position as you develop that reputation and start to build your capacities to collaborate and work innovatively with other people and not just lean on yourself and be an island unto yourself. You'll be able to have better outcomes and whether you get that promotion within your current job or you end up leaving the organization going somewhere else, you will have developed capabilities that are transferable and that will help you to drive success in your continued career growth and development. The next phase of the questions is focus on developing yourself. Um, one question I thought was particularly poignant is are you developing a network that expands outside of your own division? Yeah, it's really interesting that um, most managers when they're developing uh, focus on the people ar right around them and, and they literally don't get outside their own organization very much. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you do that, the better. Uh, outside the division, outside the company. I mean, it, it's interesting, some people just get to know their customers, get to know their vendors, get, I mean, you can even talk to union people, my God, uh, and you might learn something. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of things. Uh, do you know people in the community who aren't in your business, aren't even, may not even be in business? They're in other parts of society. It's interesting how much you can learn when you work for the community chest or when you work for the Red Cross or when you work for a local school or any of those things. You meet other kinds of people and guess what? That's how you begin to develop a view of what's going on in the world other than the received wisdom inside the company. So these are all hedges against company think. Basically. Right. Well, yes, and it's also a way of developing yourself though. Those organizations outside, nonprofits, will usually give you responsibility earlier Mm -hmm. then you'd get it in your own company. So now that's interesting. We're not just talking about civic good. We're not just talking about being involved in the community. We're really talking about management development. Yeah, you're developing yourself as someone who can contribute, who mm -hmm. can lead. Right. right. A big part of developing ourselves is extending our reach, extending our influence and our impact. And that can only happen as we expand our network. So not only our, our collaborations, our network within our unit or within our team, certainly, we need to have good relationships there, but across the organization, across divisions, how connected are we to people in other disparate areas of the organization? And furthermore, throughout the industry, are we becoming known in the industry? Are we thought leaders? How do we connect with others in the community? Do we have other key constituencies? Are we on boards? Are we on advisory um, panels? Are, uh, do we give back to the community? Are we involved with nonprofits? There are so many opportunities for us to develop ourselves and do it while we're helping other people. Uh, it's not an either or. You don't have to like be 100% inward focused, self-centered um, to be able to develop yourselves. Uh, it, it, it's... It's a little uh, interesting to think about, but honestly, the, the more you focus on others and developing others, the more opportunities will arise for you to develop yourself. The more opportunities for stretch, op, uh, for stre stretch learning uh, assignments within the workplace, um, you know, team up with a nonprofit, 
and where you can take on advanced leadership roles, budgetary roles, operations roles that are probably far beyond where you're at in your career uh, simply because they, they need you and they need your talents and your skills and you can get the experience. So just looking for ways to expand that network, looking for ways to expand your experience, looking for ways to give back and to learn continually and grow through giving back. Okay, final phase of the questions that, um, that you suggest leaders ask themselves. Focus on living a balanced life. Well, I mean, it, 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 I have to tell you that when I work with uh, middle managers, uh, pretty, people running pretty significant pieces of business, one of the questions that they always ask is, how do I do all this and take care of my family? And, and you got to you take care of your family, you have to, your friends, you, you, who are the people to, who will stick with you and help you during difficult times? Who are, who's your mirror? Who tells you the truth uh, instead of you know, what you want to hear? The higher you go, the more you're going to hear what you want to hear, not right. what, what will really help you. And uh, it takes a lot of management of the calendar. I mean, one of my favorite friends starts the year by putting on the religious holidays and then the birthdays of the children and so on, and those can't be touched. And it's surprising how much he can do, <laughs> even though he's meeting a whole different set of obligations. Joseph Bauer, great advice. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you. The points he makes here in this last clip, I think, are also very excellent. We need to have that mirror. We need to have those individuals we can lean on who can be, shoot straight with us and tell us what we need to hear, not just people who tell us what we want to hear. And that can be a really challenging thing, particularly the further up we get within an organization, the higher level roles that we find ourselves in we are going to be surrounded more and more by sycophants. Um, and that could be because of the way we act and the way uh, we interact with those around us. We could promote that inadvertently and actually create a condition where we have a, a really tight bubble around us of, of yes men, yes women, sycophants who only tell us what we want to hear. But even when we're trying to be quite proactive in um, squelching that kind of nonsense, um, it, it still emerges because people are drawn to power and influence and people want to better their career and create new opportunities for themselves by approximation and association with others who are very successful. So just by the virtue of you being successful and finding yourselves in advanced uh, roles, there will be people around you who just tell you what you want to hear. So you got to be careful. You got to, to keep a reality check, not drink the Kool-Aid and understand that not everything's rosy. So who is going to be on your personal advisory board, so to speak? Who's going to be there who you can lean on who will actually shoot straight with you? These are the types of relationships you're trying to develop throughout your career. So you have people you can lean on, they can lean on you, and you're a sounding board, and ultimately everyone wins with those types of relationships. At the end of the day, if we want to grow into our own capacities, if we want to develop ourselves into that future CEO, that future executive, that future influential and impactful leader, we need to, of course, develop ourselves. We need to take responsibility for that personal development and the knowledge, the skills, the abilities, the competencies and capabilities that will be necessary for us to thrive. But that can't happen alone. We're not an island. We can't do it ourselves. We have to have a trusted advisors. We have to have trusted relationships, people we can lean on. And ultimately, we have to focus on the development of those around us. When we focus on the development of those around us, within balance, of course, not overexerting ourselves. We can't run faster than we have strength. We have to uh, merely uh, move forward in a positive direction in, uh, in a balanced way. But as we do that and we remember the importance of our friendships and our family relationships, and we focus on those as well, we will grow into the new opportunities that come before us.
I really like this video. I really uh, appreciate all the insights provided here. I hope they were interesting to you and hopefully give you some food for thought, things to consider as you move forward into your own personal development, but also as a leader, what you can do to help your people, people on your team, recognize the role they play in their own development, that they can lean into that and they can take personal responsibility, and then you can support them as they try to learn and grow and develop into their full potential. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As always, I hope you stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day, and I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.